I'm Zach West, I'm 24 years old, so I'm a Year 2 Photography BA. Um, so I work at Tesco's, I'm a customer assistant, doing about between 10 and 12 hours a week average. No, if anything it's took away. Um, it's reduced the amount of time I have for social life. Um, it's put more stress on me because it means that I have less time to do uni work, things like that. Um, and it's it's just a job where that it's just monotonous and repetitive and it does it does bring you down after a while don't sleep I, I struggle with sleep anyway so i only average about two or three hours a night sleep um just because of the stress and anxiety that i've got um so i try and take naps whenever i can but then i'm just mentally tired all the time which means that i i'm falling behind with uni work and falling behind with you know sort of social life and interactions things like that because i'm just too exhausted for it so i think if I've had a bad day at uni, I'll go into work in a bad mood. If I've had a real bad shift, I'll go into work, I'll go into uni in a bad mood or I won't be able to focus on it because I'll be too stressed out or too annoyed. Um, so yeah, they definitely sort of impact in their own way. I'd probably say 10 plus hours a week outside of uni trying to do work, but sometimes because of the style of work that we do, you don't always get a chance because once you've done all the research and you get to like the point of shooting and things like that, it's then like a waiting game until the point where either the day comes up that you can shoot, the weather comes up for it, the model comes free, or you know, there's sort of different factors. So I'd say 10 hours a week, but then some weeks it is significantly less, some weeks it's significantly more. Um, not a lot at the moment. Um, most of the time that people go out is uh, Sunday and Monday nights, which is the most of the time where they all go out and socialise, which is the two days I work. So I haven't been out with a lot of my friends for six months other than you know there's one or two on the odd occasion where we've been down a pub but that's about it uh, especially just before Christmas um, I ended up going through counselling um, I ended up in um, on a watch list for suicide um, because I was really struggling with my mental health um, sort of depression anxiety um, stress related things like that um, it caused me to have a lot of weight gain um, and it sort of had a big effect on a lot of my relationships with my friends, my girlfriends, things like that as well, and sort of like parents, things like that. I mean, my course leader and um, uh, sort of lecturers and stuff, they're, they're pretty good for, for the part that they can play. Um, my friends are all really supportive, but only when they know that something's up, and I'm, I tend to hide quite a lot what's going on. Yeah. Um, so yes, but I probably, in those situations, don't use it as much as I, I, I should use it, as it were. I think they're aware, and I, th I think they care, but, but only to an extent, because it's kind of, I think a lot of the time the view is, well, this is just uni, this is what you've got to do, this is, you just deal with it. Um, and I think there is that sort of bit of like, yeah, we understand you, you're struggling, we're sorry you're struggling, but you've just got to go on with it. And that's, that's sometimes like a really hard sort of barrier to get past. Um, I ended up with an extension on the last module for last year, um, so towards Christmas, um, and I still didn't get a great grade out of it because I was just I was going through so many things that I just couldn't couldn't sort of focus on doing it properly, um, and I'm going through similar at the moment, um, and now where I'm I'm really struggling to get through with sort of the stuff that we're supposed to be doing for our course. The problem is, is like I know I need the money, and so I work, but working those hours and the stress that that puts on and things like that has definitely had a knock-on effect to sort of my uni work. The work that I've got and the work that my friends have got and the work that my girlfriend's got, we don't very much get a chance to sort of hang out at the flat like we used to um, and we're all so stressed that we, we tend to snap at each other and we get annoyed at things. So it, is, it has sort of like had an effect on our friendships um, and like as much as we're still friends, we're not as close as we used to be because we're all so wrapped up in our own problems. Um, and I think we all feel the same way. It's it's definitely added to that sort of level of stress because you don't feel like you've got those people to, to just be around and, and hang out with, as it were, um, which was a really good sort of thing for coping just because when we're all hanging out and stuff, it, was, it made you feel a lot better than you were feeling. It's made it difficult to prioritise uni work um, and it's made it difficult to put the uni work first because Obviously with the stress that I'm having and trying to get through work and trying to get money, 
it's sort of almost like uni work took a little bit of a back bench just because I just couldn't have the energy to focus on it or still haven't got the energy to focus on it. So I haven't freelanced as such. I, I work now as a, an assistant uh, with a photographer or I, I've, I've been working with him and I'm, I'm in contact with him. Um, and so I, I guess that's a bit of freelance because that's me putting my name out there and it's not actually an employment thing. It's just getting work through putting my name out there. Um, so yeah, I guess I've, I've done a bit of freelance per se. Um, it's really enjoyable um, and actually because it's in the sort of the job sector that I want to go in it it's taught me a lot about what the industry is really like with like a hands-on sort of experience. Prior to doing it if you've already got a good sort of network of people then yes because then you've got some sort of work there already that you don't have to worry about it. I think if you don't already have that networking there and you've not necessarily got those contacts I think it, it's so much more difficult because you've got to then build your name up from the ground and worry about your sort of your spending beforehand before you even start getting money in mm. um, so I think it, it's very dependent on each person's situation I think it's yeah. definitely harder um, especially because there's so many more people coming through now doing photography degrees doing media degrees doing arts degrees and also, from a photography point of view, with the advent of um, things like your smartphones getting better with cameras, things like that, and, and, and you know, people having more access to, to sort of decent quality cameras, I think people have started to think that it's, you don't need a photographer so much anymore, um, mm. and that you can do it all yourself. Um, and people are slowly learning that that's not necessarily the case because there's a lot of perks to it but I think it's still a long way off before it, it sort of I think evens itself out again. So if anything it's made me more driven to because it's I really don't want to stay in doing like retail and stuff for the rest of my life working because I, I worked quite a, a, a two or three years outside of I sort of had a big gap between sort of education and I worked those part-time jobs and I worked full time actually in minimum wage and if anything it's driven me more because I just don't want to do that for the rest of my life working like ridiculous hours all week trying to work for the, to get to the weekend to basically just go and just get hammered and then forget about it and go back the next week um, so yeah if anything it's made me more determined to, to really sort of push through it um, so after the course that I'm doing now I'd like to go down to London and do a master's course um, and hopefully um, get in with doing the assisting jobs, things like that, and I'd like to then get in with an agency um, and start working as a, as a professional photographer. So I quite like the commercial work that I've been helping with uh, with Dylan Collard at the moment. Um, I also am really into uh, sort of portraiture and, and sort of uh, very much sort of a documentary style, um, so uh, telling a story about, about a certain subject. So I think that would probably end up being more like a personal project and then I would then look at doing sort of portraits for editorial magazines and commercial photography, things like that, um, as, a, as a sort of the more of the, the paid job kind of thing. Um, I am, but at the moment with all the sort of stuff that I've been having with like mental health and stuff, I've sort of lost a bit of that passion at the moment, um, which I know is just because I'm stressed and I've sort of, I guess, learned to associate that stress and anxiety with the course that I'm doing and photography in itself and I think I just need to get back on top of it and, and sort of break down that um, preconceived notion that basically photography is just stress. It just gives me release. I was never, I, I grew up with a lot of sort of really artsy friends and they were all like really good at drawing or really good at playing like you know being like a music or they were really good at you know different sort of like sketching or painting or I don't know whatever um, and photography became the one thing that I sort of had um, and it, it just gave me a creative outlet for all the things going around in my head and all the ideas that I had um, and I think that was why I latched onto it when I was when I was quite a bit younger um, and especially for me analog photography like working with film and things like that I just love the whole process of you know, you, you load and you film in, you think about your shots, you take the shots, you then take it to the dark room, you process it and you scan it all in and develop it all and everything like that. And that whole process for me is really quite cathartic. 
um, it's really quite therapeutic uh, and it helps me a lot with stress to just be able to go and do it and lock myself away for an hour or two and just focus on that rather than talk about everything else that's going around in the world. I was about 12, 13, I got diagnosed with depression and anxiety um, as well as um, obsessive compulsive disorder um, and the stresses of having this course plus that and then trying to sort of form some sort of social life, the, the having those stresses has definitely increased them and it's, yeah, you know, as one, as your anxiety increases, you're so do the, the sort of the depression side of it increases and your obsessive compulsiveness increases and it just gets, it's like a snowball effect, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Um, I look at sort of people on my course, some of the work they produce, people that were in sort of the year above me, so what they produce and I, I sort of, I compare myself and it doesn't matter what sort of work I'm producing, I always feel like I'm never quite at the level that they're at or I'm never quite good enough or you know, there's so much more together than I am and or more smart or whatever, things like that. Um, so yeah, I think I, I compare myself to people a lot, which I think as well is, is sort of a, a, a thing that a lot of art students do um, but also I think it is something that people who suffer with mental health do that a lot. It's sort of that you do spend a lot of your time comparing yourself to how with it other people are and how much better other people are than you and how sort of basically insignificant you become. Um, so yeah, I, I do spend a lot of time doing that. I guess sometimes I obsess over it actually. Part time job, no, I think the thing with big companies like that is that you're, you're essentially just a number like nobody outside of the people that I work with has any real idea who I am unless I screw up big time and then suddenly they know who you are um, and I don't feel like you know no customer really comes in maybe one or two customers come in and they you know if you've given them if you've been really nice to them or they're a regular they remember who you are but outside of uh, like your sort of colleagues I don't think anyone does um, I think photography wise, maybe. I don't think I'm at the stage yet though where I'm well established enough to make much of an impact. Um, I'd say I need to have a few more years and maybe I've got into the industry before I can start doing that and, and really start establishing my work more um, rather than it just being a, a college, pro a uni project kind of thing. Obviously you become a professional photographer um, to become uh, somewhat successful within the industry and to just be at a point where I have enough money coming in that I can live a happy life without too much stress and worry um, and you know just have the basic things it'd be nice to have a house have a car have a dog have a garden have you know maybe a, a wife and kids or something you know that sort of typical thing but just to be able to wake up in the morning and not be like shit I've got so much bills to pay and I've not got enough money to cover it like I think just getting to that point and just a point where I'm I'm happy with the work I'm producing and I'm able to go and I think explore the world I think that's that's a big thing for me is that sort of I've I very much don't like being stuck in one place for too long I, I like to get out and go to other places and things like that so I, I want to go around and, and sort of explore the world while I still can before like World War Three happens or something or we all sort of like destroy each other.